Welcome back to A Stoic Plays, ladies and gentlemen. The series where I play a bunch of different games from different genres and studios. And this day's selection is Kim by The Secret Games Company. And that's actually their name. I don't mean it's a secret. That is their name, The Secret Games Company. And it is a procedural open world RPG set in the times of colonial India around the 1880s or thereabouts. And it's based on the book of the same name by Rudyard Kipling. And it's about a young Irish boy in India who is basically an orphan and completely wholeheartedly adopts the Indian culture. And the book is about his adventures alongside a Buddhist Lama, that is the spiritual figure, not the animal that spits, and this game is set in that same kind of story. Now what's interesting about it is the developers are offering to give free copies of this game to schools. It's like a, I guess, Indian version of the Oregon Trail, kind of an educational RPG. So let's take a look at it. Kim by The Secret Games Company. An Akali, a wild-eyed, wild-haired Sikh devotee in the blue-checked clothes of his faith, with polished steel quoits glistening on the cone of his tall blue turban, stalked past, returning from a visit to one of the independent Sikh states, where he had been singing the ancient glories of the Kalasa to college-trained princelings in top boots and white cord breeches. Kim was careful not to irritate that man for the Akali's temper is short and his arm quick. Oh boy, already I can tell you I'm not going to do a great job with these kind of mid, or mid, turn of the century, I should say, British phrases and Indian pronunciations. I do know what a Sikh is. Uh, Sikh are an Indian faith where they wear a turban and grow long beards. So the game starts in Lahore, which today is in Pakistan, I believe. It's once capital of Ranjit Singh's Sikh Empire. It fell during the Second Anglo-Sikh War. The foe were driven back into Lahore, which was occupied by the British, and a treaty signed. This, however, was most basely, treacherously, and perfidiously broken by the Sikhs. Recourse was again had to arms, and then followed the brilliant victories of Chilianwala, fought by Lord Go, who held the field, but at great loss, on 13th January 1849, and that of Gujarat, fought by Lord Go on 21st February, 1849. It is surrounded by a brick wall, which was 25 feet high, well mounted with heavy ordnance and having an excellent trench round the hole, but which has been considerably lowered. The fort lies at the northwest angle of the town and contains large, well-stored magazines and manufactories of warlike implements, etc. And there's an actual photograph of that era Lahore. That's really, really cool. I kind of feel like I should be like Daz Tactic right now. I feel like I, I need to have some kind of Britishy accent to really pull this A Stoic plays off, but I don't have one, so we're just gonna have to do the best, the best that we can here. Oh boy, okay. So let's play. Maybe, play, there we go. And I love the art style, first off the bat. It's like this hand-drawn, top-down, beautiful art style. And all the different towns that you can visit and the different landscapes. It's just so well done. Oh, child. Things are gonna get easier. Teshu Lama. Oh, child. What is this big house? Teshu Lama is a Buddhist pilgrim. He has a 57 opinion of Kim. Kim is quite well tanned for an Irishman, one of the darker Irishmen I've seen. Teshu Lama is 51 years old. He is slender, short-sighted, generous, and devout. The Wonder House? What is your caste? Where is your house? Have you come far? I came by Kulu from beyond the Kailas, but what know you from the hills where uh, the air and water are fresh and cool? A guru from Tibet. I have not seen such a man. They are Hindus in Tibet then. We are followers of the middle way, living in peace in our lamasaris. 
and I go to see the four holy places before I die. He turned his head like an old tortoise in the sunlight. It is long since I have eaten or drunk. What is the custom of charity in this town? In silence, as we do in Tibet, or speaking aloud? Those who beg in silence starve in silence. Give me the bowl. I know the people of this city, all who are charitable. Give, and I will bring it back filled. Okay, so the big black arrow is telling me to go over here. So I'm Kim, right here. Looks like this is Teshu Lama. And these guys that are in circles are just random folk. So come on, Kim. Oh, okay. Guess I have to click all the way to the arrow. This is Balwant Singh Boparai. This is a Sikh grocer who is 22 years old. 3% prices, base 50, miserly negative 5. So I suppose that if the grocer likes you more, you will have to pay less for groceries, which is great. What kind of foods can I get here? Bread. Bread's always good. Oh, it's not letting me have to beg for the llama. There is a new priest in the city, a man such as I have never seen. Old priest, young tiger. I am tired of new priests. They settle on our wares like flies. Is my father a well of charity to give to all who ask? He is rather yagi, bad-tempered, than yogi. Come, friend, fill me this bowl. He waits. The bowl indeed, that cow-bellied basket. The bowl was returned full of hot rice. Thank you. The grocer popped a fried cake on top. Nice. All right, so now we can go back. Oh, he's coming to us. They ate together in great content clearing the begging bowl, and then sat in quiet satisfaction as the light faded. I think that so old a man as you, speaking the truth to chance-met people, is in great need of discipline. Or, <laughs> discipline, is in great need of a disciple. Why, yes, you can be my cella, and I can teach you the law. By this I know I shall find a certain river for which I seek, the river of the arrow, which washes away all taint and spectacle of sin. Let us begin our search. Not by night. Thieves are about. Wait till the day. But there is no place to sleep. The old man was used to the order of his monastery, and though he slept on the ground as the rule decrees, preferred a decency in these things. We shall get good lodging at the Kashmir Serai. I have a friend there. Come. Okay, we're going to go see this guy at the Kashmir Serai. Kim walks like he's waving his arms to and fro. He's like, wah! Can we sleep here, Mahbub Ali, who is a horse trader? The horse trader, his deep embroidered Bokhariot belt unloosed, was lying on a pair of silk carpet sandalbags, pulling lazily at an immense silver hookah. Little friend of all the world, what is this? I am now that holy man's disciple, and we go on a pilgrimage together. Mabub puffed his hookah in silence. Then he began, almost whispering. Do this for me. In Umbala you will find a sahib called Colonel Creighton. Let it be known to him that a horse, a white stallion, which I have sold to an officer the last time I returned from the passes, has had its pedigree established. He turned feeling on the floor beside him and tossed a flap of soft, greasy bread to the boy. And for all the sake of a white stallion... You may lie down among my horse boys, you and the llama. Return soon. You are always welcome here. He is robust, protective, strong, but a little grumpy. The bread held a hundred rupees, enormous largesse. He knew he had rendered a service to Mahbub Ali, and not for one little minute did he believe the tale of the stallion's pedigree. So one of the aspects of the book that this game is based on is what's called The Great Game. And that is kind of a political international rivalry between like Britain and Russia. And there might have been other players too, but it's all about Central Asia and India and just kind of the expanding influences of empire. And Kim plays a role in this game, as Kim the character plays a role in the great game. 
Our fatigue is at 40. That's no good. We want to go to Maboob Horse Dealers. Yeah, 12 hours of sleep. That's that's really good sleep, but okay. You're free to explore, but be careful. India can be a harsh place for one so young. Carry food, eat regularly, and get enough sleep. As you travel, speak to people. This is your youth. Make the most of it. When you turn 18, this story will end, but you may retell it as many times as you wish. The labels below show what each button does. Thank you. All right, so this is our trusty compass or watch. This is our health. This is our happiness. This is our fatigue meter. This is our options. This is our map. And it's a beautiful map, by the way. It's of Northern India and I guess parts of Pakistan. We're in Lahore and we have to go to Umbala. And I guess we can find out if we have any warrants for our arrest and it appears that we do not. Well, that's good. This is how much money we have. It's our suitcase, so it's our money and items. You can see here we have 100 rupees. We also have tattered clothes, bread, rice, and sweet meats. This is our stats here. Now, what's interesting about this game is it's actually really, really hard. Like, keeping Kim alive is very difficult. He needs to constantly eat and sleep, you know, like a real person. But it's hard to gather the food. Like, when I first played it, I was trying to be somewhat luxurious. So when you travel places, you can choose to beg for food or buy food. You could choose to sleep on the ground or pay for accommodations. And I, I did the paying for accommodations, paying for food, and eventually ran out of money and food. And it was rough times. Another thing that's interesting about this game is there is a combat mechanic. Combat mode. And it's so interesting because you can just go and kill anybody. It's 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 kind of doesn't fit the theme, right? It's supposed to be an educational game about learning about religions and the great game and history. And you just go around shanking fools. It's really, really interesting. But it's it's got a neat mechanic. They have a cone of vision. So you kind of want to get behind them and, and shank them. This is the notebook, like our quest list, so to speak. We're looking for the River of the Arrow for the Buddhist Lama. And we have to deliver a message to Umbala about the White Stallion. And that's what we're going to do. So there are a couple things you could do here. You can, if you want to, steal. Like, not only can you murder people at random, but you can also lockpick. And, like, for example, you go over here. And the door's lock could only withstand a rudimentary pick. Someone is inside. So obviously you don't want to pick a lock when someone's in there. The doorway is shrouded by a mangy curtain. So if you want to be that kind of character, or maybe you're just desperate and need food to survive, you can break into people's houses. Which I guess makes sense if you're a kind of a vagabond. Oh, right. Click the arrow. There we go. Sleep outside, sleep inside, beg food, buy food. And depending on how you do it, depends on... Oh, you can have a pace, too. You could hurry. But will add a lot of fatigue. You can go leisurely, which will add happiness. But it looks like the more leisurely you go, the less health you lose. Or sorry, the faster you go, the less health you lose. It's kind of a trade-off there. You could sleep outside or inside. Obviously, the issue is health. If you sleep inside, your health stays the same. If you sleep outside, you lose health. And you can beg food or buy food. Now, if you buy food, you lose money, but you lose less health and you lose less fatigue. And it also takes you less time on your trip. So if you were to just go full throttle, sleep inside, buy food, and go leisurely, you would take a long trip, but gain a lot of happiness, lose no health, get no fatigue, but you'd spend 15 of your 100 rupees. So what we're going to do is we're going to travel at a normal speed. And we will sleep inside and buy food. It only costs us 9 rupees. Too late, alas, the song, to remedy the wrong. The rooms are taken from us, swept and garnished for their fate. But these tear besprinkled pages shall attest to future ages that we cried against the crime of it. Too late, alas, too late. Huh. 
You're starting to see India from Kim's perspective. Where's the next meal? If you notice buttons flashing, click them. Kim has a problem, but don't worry. It's nothing food and rest can't fix. If you're not sure where to go, check your map. The flag icons mark objectives. Click them for more info. Okay, so these guys here you can talk to. The ones that are, or you could at least learn something good from them. The ones that have the little stars around them. See, this is Father Victor. Oh, apparently you can't. I thought that meant something. Why are there soldiers? Asks the llama. I don't know. Hey guys, what's up? This is Aliyah Shenze. She is a Muslim woman. Let's ask her about what being a Muslim is like. You must be a Muslim. How often do you pray? Whenever I can, boy, as should you. When you hear the call, look west and kneel. I'll listen out. Now she gave us a little bit boost in opinion because we talked to her. But now she's talking with Owen Bentham, who is a British farmer. Let's talk about what's it like to be British. Sahib, tell me, are your gods like ours? You natives and your gods. My god is progress. You can be a part of it, boy. We'll see. No. Unlocked. Get an English outfit. Now let's talk to Khalid Rana about what it's like to be a trader. A traveling merchant. Oh, the things you must have seen. Up and down Hind I travel. A new village every night. If only my family could accompany me. I bet you could tell a tale or two. And I gained plus 10 merit. Nice. But what I really want to do is I want to go take the train to Umbala. That's 12 hours and 16 rupees. Let's go. Yeah, the art is just really beautiful. It's obvious they put a lot of work into it. I don't know why, but that reminds me of that first scene in Dumbo, you know, where the train comes in and... Yeah, anyway. Hari Babu replied that he was no more than an inexpert dabbler in the mysteries, but at least he thanked the gods therefore. He knew when he sat in the presence of a master. He himself had been taught by the sahibs, who do not consider expense in the lordly halls of Calcutta, but, as he was ever first to acknowledge, there lay a wisdom behind earthly wisdom, the high and lonely lore of meditation. All right, so this is Umbala. There you can see here, it's some beautiful trees, people hanging out, not a lot going on, seems kind of a sleepy place. The traveler will come to the church, which is in the Gothic style, and was consecrated on the 4th of January, 1857. It is one of the finest, if not the finest, church in India. It was built by an officer of the Bengal engineers named Atkinson, author of the well-known book Curry and Rice. The east window is of stained glass from Newcastle. The screen is made of the wood of the Dalbergia Sisu, which takes a handsome polish. It was made at Carnal by Indian workmen and cost 40 pounds. They asked in England 208 pounds for a similar article in oak. It was designed by the chaplain, Mr. Rotten, and put up a chaplain named Rotten, <laughs> and put up in November 1874. Mr. Rotten was chaplain at Mirat when the mutiny broke out, and afterwards chaplain to the forces at the siege of Delhi. That's from Murray's Handbook of the Punjab, Western Rajputana, Kashmir, and Upper Sindh, 1883. All right, so we are now in Umbala. Let's see what's going on here. Excuse me. Colonel Creighton, I gotta tell you about a white stallion. The pedigree of the white stallion is fully established. What proof is there? Mahbub Ali has given me this proof. Kim handed him the wad of folded paper, and the man turned away and dropped a coin. Kim could hear the clink. Let's spy on the man. Kim saw him study Mahbub Ali's message. His face changed and darkened, and Kim, used as every beggar must be to watching countenances, took good note. Move closer. The man was speaking to someone. He bears out the other's information. Practically, they showed their hand six months back, but Devonish would have it. There was a chance of peace. Of course, they used it to make themselves stronger. Send off those telegrams at once. The new code, not the old. Mine and Wharton's. I don't think we need to keep the ladies waiting any longer. We can settle the rest over the cigars. I thought it was coming. It's punishment, not war. 
The man stopped and turned in Kim's direction, a quizzical expression on his face. Kim dove into a nearby bush, drawing blood on a number of thorns, and was then stranded, awaiting a quiet moment to slip away. Neat. Hey, what's up? Let's talk about being Hindu with a Hindu guard, Anil Suri. Why do you Hindus have so many gods? Our gods are the old gods, the true gods of India. Join us, young one, and be free. Maybe I will. Let's talk to this guy again, Creighton. Oh, we can't. Okay. Oh, we can get a Hindu outfit now. Oh, holy one. What is the purpose of your pilgrimage? Tell me of this river of the arrow you seek. Our gracious lord once fired an arrow that passed far and far beyond sight. At the last it fell, and where it touched earth, there broke out a stream, which presently became a river of healing. Thou dost not, then, know the river? Not I. Kim laughed uneasily. I go to look for, for a bull, a red bull, on a green field who shall help me. I hear red bulls give you wings. <laughs> boylike, if an acquaintance had a scheme, Kim was quite ready with one of his own, and boylike, he had really thought for as much as twenty minutes at a time of his father's prophecy. For what, child? God knows, but so my father told me, if one so old and so little, so used to truth-telling, may go out, for the small matter of a river, it seems to me that I too must go a-traveling. Perhaps they will make me a king. I will teach the other and better desires upon the road. Yeah, being a king kind of sucks. This is Dalbir Singh Kalan. He is a Sikh letter writer. Let's talk about what it's like to be Sikh. You are a Sikh, so tell me, are Sikhs the greatest warriors? Not I. My war is with the selfishness within. You would make a fine Sikh. Join us. Maybe one day. How does he know? I mean, he doesn't know anything about me. I could be a horrible person. Newspaper. What is this newspaper the Sahibs read? Newspaper? That's the pioneer. I have sent them many letters, but without reply. Where does it come from? It is printed in Allahabad. You can see the building there. They write it and print it all under one roof. Do you want to become a writer? Maybe one day. I love how Kim is just kind of whatever about everything. Hey, Kim, you want to be a Muslim? Hey, yeah, sounds like a good plan. Hey, Kim, you want to be a Sikh? Yeah, you know, it's kind of nice. Hey, Kim, you want to be a writer? Yeah, hey, maybe one day. Like, Kim's just not very good at making decisions. Ooh, it's a shop. Okay, so we can buy lock picks. Locksmith set, a compass, that's neat. It cuts your journey time by 15%, but it's 65 rupees. That's a lot of rupees. Oh my goodness, a cotton tent is 325 rupees. Guess we're not gonna be getting that. Survey equipment, all right, a rucksack. You're crippled, miserly, and observant. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. That's pretty up here, let's go see what this is. It's a Hindu temple. Hindus are welcome to come in if they have appropriate attire. Well, we don't. Interesting. We talk to you? Nope, you're a Muslim laborer. Let's ask you about Umbala. Do a lot of people live in Umbala? Umbala is a crossroads. People come and go all day, but few stay long. It is just another stop on their itinerary. The supply store, the only one not in Hill Country, is worth making a trip for, but since the British arrived, the prices have been similarly unpleasant. He's a weak laborer. Man, I think you're in the wrong job. I'll pay it a visit, says Kim. The supply store, huh? Is that this? No, that's an apartment. Nobody's at home. We could pick the lock. But we're not going to, because I'm a good Kim. Oops. Sorry, don't do that. All right, what I need to do is uh, eat some stuff. There we go, I eat some bread. Is it, am, I, am I good? Maybe I need some rice too. My health is 61, I can eat the sweet meats. And now it's 62. See how you run out of food really quickly? Okay, that's nothing. Let's see what's down here. 
We're not going to go very far, but uh, for the purposes of this Let's Play, we'll just continue doing it this way, because it's not like I'm going to run out of money just in the course of this episode. I'm not going to read this. These are all, I guess, selections from the Rudyard Kipling book. Okay, what do we got? Ooh, we got a campfire. And there's some sweet meats. They mine now. Not too good for strange campfire sweet meats. Who are you? Want to talk? You are Sundar Singh Gojia, a Sikh policeman, but you don't want to talk to me. That's too bad. Ooh, what's this? Sweet. We could go. Let's go to Dara Dunn. Ooh, I got the achievement for Dara Dunn. The general appearance of the valley is sloping, picturesque, with beautifully cultivated fields, serrated, or serrated, <laughs> separated by hedges, intersected by streams, interspersed with lofty forests, and, in short, closely resembles the scenery of Great Britain. Its chief productions are sugarcane, gour, gour? I have no idea what gour is. Sugar, tea, of excellent quality, bananas, plantains, in immense abundance, I thought that was like a tropical fruit. Cotton, opium, hemp, indigo, all English plants, and especially flowers, etc. It abounds with dense forests in which are found elephants, buffaloes, tigers, leopards, hyenas, lynxes, jackals, wild hogs, bears, deer, and four-horned antelopes, leguars, bandars, pytheris, etc. Are those even real things? The climate is temperate and very healthy for Europeans, except during the months of July, August, and September, when the monsoon prevails, when fevers prevail to an alarming degree. I love these photos, though. It really gives a lot of character to the game and kind of shows you where you are in a real sense. Oh, look, this guy's doing some kind of chant. Let's talk to him. He's a Hindu explorer. Why are you chanting? Are you a Buddhist? Me? No, not today, anyway. He had a twinkle in his eye. Why are you chanting, then? It's an odd habit, or an old habit. It's both old and odd. Why are you here? I have friends at the Survey of India, formerly colleagues. You don't work there anymore? I didn't work there. Mine was more field work. Oh, you're a spy, aren't you? Where did you go? To the mountains in the north. Is that where you learned the Buddhist chant? That is where I practiced it. Do you miss traveling? I do. Maybe I can bring you a souvenir of the northern lands. And that's a quest. I can deliver him a souvenir of the north. That would be very kind of you. I'll do my best. So where are we now exactly? Okay, so we're, yeah, we're up almost into Tibet. We're in the Himalayas. So, yeah. All right, neat. Oh, we could have taken the train all the way to Delhi. That would have been that would have been fun. Lad Ladakh, Hill States, and Champa and Kashmir. So I guess these are all like different countries in this period of time. How interesting. But ladies and gentlemen, we are out of time. So this was my introduction to Kim, a procedural open world RPG by the Secret Games Company. And I guess it does kind of have that Oregon Trail kind of vibe to it that you could see like kids playing it in school to learn about this period of history. Perhaps a little bit less relevant to American students than the Oregon Trail, being as that took place in America. But still, hey man, I love learning, and I'm totally for anything that teaches people things. I think the world could definitely use a lot more of it. And the art style is fantastic. The music is good. It kind of gets you immersed in it. Um, it's interesting how you go around kind of discussing different religions and it just seems like a very explorative kind of game now you didn't really get to see the survival aspect of it in this showcase but pretty soon you run out of food and you get tired and you get injured once you run out of food you start getting sick and then things just kind of go all haywire the wheels fall off basically and then you die and so you have to continue to keep yourself fed which is more difficult than it seems and uh that's really that
So I hope you enjoyed the showcase of Kim. And uh, for those of you who are interested in this type of experience, I highly recommend it. It seems really interesting. It seems like you can learn a lot from it. And I really enjoyed playing it. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Marcus Aurelius. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.